Hi everyone and welcome back to my bench. Today I have a project that I've already shown and shared with you, but I'm gonna do a different retake on it because I had several of my friends uh, requesting interest in it. So what this is, is a pellet level monitor that I'm using in my uh, pellet stove to heat up the home. How it works, I have this VL 53 LOX sensor to read out the distance in front of it and convert that to a level that I map to a certain distance from the capacity of the pellet boiler that I have. The video in the corner that you saw will uh, explain how it works. And in today's video, I'm going to try to upgrade it. So we now have it on a mobile app and it can be accessible from anywhere, even if you don't have a smart home setup like I have with Home Assistant. Now, the way I, I did the project this time, so last time we were having ESP Home controlling the module and everything was connected to Home Assistant. In today's version, Home Assistant is out of the equation and we have the Node MCU being programmed through the Arduino Cloud. And this is the IoT remote app from Arduino that is showing us a nice uh, little dashboard where we have two versions of basically the same exact information. How it works, it measures the distance in front of the sensor and based on the capacity of the storage tank of the pellet stove, I'm mapping that to a value from zero to a hundred basically anything above uh, five centimeters. So if I have my hand close to the sensor and you would see this would update uh, once every 10 seconds. So we'll need to wait a few seconds. So anything above three centimeters uh, or closer to the sensor will register as being full. As I move my hand back, that will go down all the way to about 80 centimeters. Currently, this is pointing at a wall, which is about 50 centimeters, so maybe 60. So it's showing about 43%. And if I point the sensor somewhere away, then it will show as uh, being completely empty. So additional to making the project standalone, uh, we in terms of software, we need to make sure that we make it standalone in terms of hardware. So we will need some sort of an enclosure for both the sensor and the Node MCU. So we will be doing some 3D printing as well. And when we are 3D printing, I must thank today's sponsor, which is PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop manufacturing shop for all of your project needs. Whether you're prototyping a new design, crafting custom parts, or working on a personal project, PCBWay offers high quality 3D printing and precision CNC machining services to meet all of your needs. They work with a huge variety of materials, so no matter how unique your project is, they got you covered. What I love is how easy they make it. Just upload your design, get an instant quote, and their team takes care of the rest. Plus, their turnaround times are fast, their prices are super competitive, and their customer service is top-notch. If you are looking for reliable, professional manufacturing services, head over to PCBWay.com and see how they can help you turn your ideas into reality. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. So when it comes to 3D design, I'm still not an expert. I can get my bearings through most of the 3D design programs, but when it comes to figuring out something from scratch, I still struggle with it. That's why I searched for a model online and I stumbled upon this one, which is for a screwable case for the VL53LOX uh, sensor made by Thongs. I'll have the link down in the video description. And I really like this design because it looked simple and cool enough. So I wanted to test the fitting because notice that he's using a slightly different sensor than uh, what I have here. So I printed just the lid of the sensor. And when I tried to fit the sensor, I noticed that there is just too much play and too much slop in it. So the sensor would just fall out uh, if it's out of the place. So I took the liberty to get the model and modify it to come to a version two. Version two is almost exactly the same as version one with slightly larger 
pillars, so I made those, I think, 0 0.1 um, larger, and you could see that we now have a really snug fit, and that is not going anywhere. Now, I didn't like that there is a... I don't know how much you could see that, but the sensor is a bit off-center there, so I fixed that later, but now it was time to move to the other part of the enclosure, uh, and this is the cover. In the original model, he had this to be mounted with screws to a wall or something. I'll be mounting this inside pellet stove and I don't want to be doing any modifications of any sort to the stove itself. So I'm gonna be using magnets to position the sensor on the lid of the storage tank of the pellet boiler. I have my sensor mounted uh, exactly like that that I'm currently using and it's proving to be okay. And for the magnets, I'm gonna be using this small 5x5x1mm five by five by uh, neodymium magnets. However, in this first version, I made it a bit uh, less tall than what he had it because I didn't need that much space inside. And I added two holes for the magnets, but the issue is that I made the holes exactly the same size as the magnets, so they are not, they do not fit. And to mitigate that, I printed another like a template and this is uh, 5.1, 5.2 and 5.3 millimeters to see what would be the best fit. 5.3 seemed to just fall out. Um, 5.2 also seemed just a bit too big, but 5.1 seemed to be Fine, however, I did not take into the consideration that I do not have thick enough walls on the sides to to properly fit the uh, the magnets inside. So when I printed a new version of it, uh, you could see I had a fingerprint on the build plate uh, that caused this and this until I wiped it off. I was able to install the magnets here, but there are first of all, not deep enough. And also you could see here, uh, it's a bit crooked because uh, it's also not wide enough to press it. And it turns out that on the final version, I did the 5.2 and we can try and add a magnet to it now. And you could see that it fits perfectly. I don't want to press it in fully because I want to be able to get it out and add just a tiny drop of glue inside, but that seems nice. On the original version of the case, the author had a hole on the back where he could thread in the, the cable. I didn't like that because mine will sit stuck to the uh, lid of the stove. So I wanted the hole to be on the side and I've added that to be roughly four millimeters because to connect the sensor and the port, I'm gonna be using a cable like this, which is from an old USB lead. And this is like the perfect diameter to snugly fit this cable through. Now the lid closes really snugly to the case. And one of the issues that I had with this first version is that there, once you close it, there is really no good way to open it up unless you pry it with something really sharp. So on this later version of the lid, I also added this notch to the side where you could use a screwdriver and just pry it open. This one has that fix where the sensor is just a tiny bit, hold on more centered and you could probably see it better here and you also see the laser diode measuring the distance and if we close it here that closes nicely and we have that on the side so we can just pop it open without any damage to the model if we ever need to. Now the reason why I'm designing this to be separate from the controller is because 
this uh, will sit in a metal tank uh, with its primary purpose so it needs to get the signal out of what basically is a Faraday's cage where there is no Wi-Fi or anything so the controller will need to sit outside of the stove and that's why we need to have some sort of a wire that we can run through and with the case of the sensor already sorted next was to find and print an enclosure for the node MCU and here is the enclosure on maker world however what i don't like about the enclosure even though i really like the enclosure i really don't like the license that is being put out to which basically prevents me from using this commercially but i'm gonna use just for demo purposes to at least confirm and test the prototype that i have i'll use it uh, at home but for the later version i'll need to either design something else or find a different model the obvious next step is to assemble everything as a one unit solder uh, the wiring in place and have it ready as a full product And here we are almost at the end. I had to do a slight modification here and bend the pin inwards because it was interfering with the wire soldered to this uh, like ledge that's on the cover. I guess I added just a bit too much glue here to the cable. So let's fix that so we can close it. There are a few things that I will need to improve on this case for the next revision because or even start from scratch uh, because I just realized that with the cover on top if we can add it So yeah, with the cover on top, everything is now closed. But if you remember, the antenna is facing this way. And on one side is closed by the cable. So the cable is going over the antenna. And on the other side, I've added magnet holes to the case here. So this will be stuck to the side of the pallet uh, stove. So I think that that might cause us interference. We'll see if we have a good Wi-Fi signal on that. I don't like the cable strain release on this one. This one is kind of better because it has quite a lot of grip just on its own. But we'll see now with everything connected, let's power it up and verify that it still works okay so here it is it's definitely working uh, if i point it to a different location within that wall the distance will change and so will the level i'll try to add that uh, add this to my pellet boiler as an additional to what i already have and we'll see how it compares and how it behaves now even though the project is now done and we've achieved what we've set to do 
I don't think that they can call this thing completed yet, especially not as a commercial product. If you have any suggestions on what I can use other than the Arduino Audi Cloud, then feel free to leave them down in the video comments. If you have any further questions about the projects, make sure to also leave them down in the video comments. Make sure to subscribe and let me know if you guys are interested in seeing like a version two. Everything required, all the code and uh, links to the files will be in the video description. And I would see you all in the next one. Cheers.